Hey, what's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball all postseason long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. One, how do you feel about the NLCS roster? Is there anything you would do differently? And two, how do you feel about about going with Corey Knebel, a bullpen game in game one of the NLCS versus the Braves. I want all your takes down below in the comment section. And also, give me your predictions for this series, the Dodgers or Braves, and how many games. I want your takes down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And a happy NLCS Dodgers Nation. We're going to go over that NLCS roster that the Dodgers just released this morning in just a second. But first, we've got some breaking news, and that is that Corey Knable was just announced as the Dodgers starter for Game 1 against the Atlanta Braves, and it's going to be a bullpen game. So Dave Roberts said yesterday he was going to check in with Max Scherzer to see how he felt, to see if he was going to go. He had the first save of his career, one of the most memorable Dodger saves ever in Game Game 5 of the NLDS. He closed it out against San Francisco. He finished their season. He threw 13 pitches, had two punch outs. He also partied hard after the game, I'm assuming. And I think it was a good move. I'm fine with going with the bullpen game here in Game 1 because, one, they've had tremendous success doing it all season long. And because of the starting pitcher situation this year with Kershaw going down, with what happened with Trevor Bauer, this bullpen is used to going in there and executing in these types of games and also you got to get the split you have to win at least one game in Atlanta today the Bravos are going with the lefty Max Freed and tomorrow the righty Ian Anderson so I would rather just make sure that Max Scherzer is ready to go in game two and if they lose today they'll be in a good spot to take game two with Scherzer on the mound and that's what happened in the NLDS they lost game one and then they took game two and I think that has to be the plan and like I said the Dodgers they've had tremendous success in these bullpen games this year and if you look at game one Corey Knable was a little rocky there for a second but he did get the job done and he had a scoreless inning but it wasn't a clean inning gave up that double to Buster Posey there was some hard contact on that rough fly ball but he did get the big punch out of Brandon Crawford and he stranded Buster Posey on second but if it weren't for Mookie Betts he might have been at third Buster Posey that could have been a triple the way it bounced off the wall kind of rolled in the outfield, but he did his job nonetheless. The big question today is, will Tony Gonsolin turn Atlanta into Catlanta? Will Gonsolin get the job done? Tony Gonsolin last year in the postseason, he had his struggles. He had an 8-8-8 ERA, 13 punch outs to 9 walks, and he allowed 4 home runs. Freddie Freeman hit a home run off him in Game 2, and Dansby Swanson went deep on him in Game 7. Now, his last action was back on September 30th. He started against the Padres. We allowed three runs on four hits, had five punch outs to two walks, but he also gave up two home runs. And the other issue, too, is it's been 17 days since he last saw action. And what happened last year? He went 16 days before his start in the NLCS. So one question I have is, will the long layoff negatively affect him like it did last year? And I think the big keys for Gonsolin tonight are throwing strikes. Attack the zone. You don't want to see him go out there and nibble he has to trust his stuff and also can he keep the ball in the yard the bombs last year were a problem the walks were a problem the pitch count was going up early in the game so I'm hoping that he learns from last year the experience has helped him and I hope he's filled I hope that split change bottom of the zone is working he can throw his heater by guys if he has it going so if he is that bulk guy today I do think he can get it done he just has to go out there make pitches execute be confident and if not, the Dodgers, they have guys. And we're going to get into some of those guys on that roster in just a second. But I have no issue with the bullpen game in game one. I'd rather save Max Scherzer in game two. Look what happened in the wild card game. They win that game, a big game. They celebrate, they party hard. And then game one of the NLDS, they get shut out. So I'm pretty sure they partied hard after game five. In fact, I know they partied hard after game five. Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger, Max Scherzer, they all talked about it. So I'm fine 
line with him going with this bullpen game in game one. I just think the offense needs to step up against Max Freed. I'm calling it right now. I think that Trey Turner is going to break out of his slump. I think he's going to have a big series against Atlanta. He's familiar with their pitching. He faced them extensively when he was with the Nationals in the NL East. He has three home runs against the Braves in 54 at-bats this year. So I'm hoping it's a big breakout series for Trey Turner and this offense can score tons of runs to help out this bullpen in this game. But really, it's a bullpen game. But Tony Gonza, we know, is a starter. And I hope he goes out there and pitches well because the time is meow for Tony Gonson. But now let's take a quick look at the Dodgers' 26-man NLCS roster. So yesterday, Dave Roberts told us they were probably going to go with 13 position players and 13 pitchers, and that's exactly what they did. So let's look at the position players first. You got Austin Barnes, Matt Beatty, Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts, Gavin Lux, A.J. Pollock, Albert Pujols, Corey Seager, Will Smith, Steven Souza Jr., Chris Taylor, Justin Turner, and Trey Turner. So the first takeaways there are one, no Max Muncy. So there was some hope that maybe he'd be ready for the NLCS. He dislocated his elbow against the Brewers on the last game of the season. Well, that's not the case. Also, you don't see Billy McKinney. So Billy McKinney, they were using him as a late game defensive substitution. He actually did have one at bat in the NLDS. He struck out in game four. And we all know that Dave Roberts just liked him some Billy McKinney, but he's left off this NLCS roster for some pitchers that we'll talk about in just a second. But yes, no Max Muncy. And you lose Max Muncy, he is your power guy. He was the most productive power hitter for the Dodgers this year. And they're going to definitely miss him in this series. Last year in the 2020 NLCS versus the Braves, he had a 1,043 OPS, had two home runs and two doubles. So he is the Dodgers slugger. He led the team this year in home runs with 36. He led the team in RBIs with 94, led the team in war. So, so look, not having Max Muncy is definitely going to be a blow against the Braves, but they didn't have him in the wild card game. They didn't have him in the NLDS. And even if he was going to try to play, what kind of player would he be right away? And then also you have the emergence of Kobe and Shaq, a.k.a. Gavin Lux and Cody Bellinger. They're playing much better of late. Cody Bellinger, the clutch hit there in game five of the NLDS. Chris Taylor, I like the way he's swinging the back. So I think this offense, they can still carry the load. They can still get it done without Max Muncy. And just look at this lineup. It's so stacked. I mean, Corey Seager could go off. Mookie Betts has been going off. Trey Turner, I think, is going to have a big series. So this Dodgers team, they have the depth to overcome not having Max Muncy. And hopefully, he can get right and be ready for the World Series if the Dodgers are able to advance. But now let's look at the pitchers. I think there's a lot of interesting moves here. You got Phil Bigford, Walker Bueller, Justin Brule, Tony Gonsolin, Bruce Dark Gratterall, Kenley Jansen, Joe Kelly, Corey Knable, Evan Phillips, Max Scherzer, Blake Trinan, Julio Urias, and Alex Vesia. So one of the first takeaways there is you don't see David Price. Now, David Price, he was on that NLDS roster, but doesn't make the cut for the NLCS. And really, I have no issue with it. He's been solid at times this year, but for the season, he has a 403 ERA with a 14.25 whip. It's much higher than that in the second half of the season. Doesn't miss very many bats. Yes, he gives you that long man potential, but I don't have an issue with seeing him left off the NLCS roster. Now, I saw some people on Twitter this morning saying that he wasn't in the Dodgers celebration picture for Game 5 of the NLDS. I don't know what to make of that. I'm not reading too much into that, but it is interesting. But look, the reality is his teammates love David Price. Very popular in the clubhouse. This guy's a Cy Young Award winner. He's a World Series champion. Doesn't have anything to prove to anyone, but he will not be on the NLCS roster for the Dodgers. And they do have Justin Brule. And Justin Brule, he's a lefty. He can get it done. This year with LA, he has a 2.89 ERA in 18 and two-thirds innings pitched in 21 games. And he was used extensively down the stretch. Since they acquired him on August 8th, he made 21 appearances in 52 games. That was fourth most on the team. So he replaces David Price as a lefty in that Dodgers bullpen to go along with Alex Vesia. So two lefties in that Dodger pen. So hopefully Justin Brules in the NLCS for LA. And then we've got Evan Phillips. So Evan Phillips, they acquired him off waivers from the Tampa Bay Rays. And with the Dodgers in seven games and 10 to thirds innings pitch, he has a 3.48 ERA, a 12.58 whip. He has a 7.8 strikeouts per nine. 
right? So not a very big punch out guy. He had a 19% K percentage on the year. But hey, a longer series, a seven game series, you're going to need more arms. The Dodgers did just that. You've seen them increase the arms each round from 10 to 12 to now 13. But of course, there's a roster that can win this series. You know that. And the other thing that sticks out too is eight of the 26 players on this roster were either acquired or not on the opening day roster. You got Phil Bigford, Justin Brule, Alex Vesia, Evan Phillips, Albert Pujols, Steven Souza Jr., Max Scherzer, and Trey Turner. So Andrew Friedman, this guy is a roster construction genius. He is the GOAT in the league right now, in my opinion. But let me know down below in the comment section. One, how do you feel about a bullpen game in game one? Two, how do you feel about the 26-man NLCS roster? And three, give me your predictions for the series down below in the comment section. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, all postseason long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. For all his Dodgers Nation merch, head over to gearup.la, download the new Dodgers Nation app. For the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.